Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So my name is Hansa Nora Samba and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture honors and I've also done my uh, master's in nematology and agriculture. Right, so for today's topic, I've chosen uh, on this uh, topic of black pepper. Right, so this cubical variety uh, of black pepper, it is an improved disease resistant variety. So we're gonna talk something about it. Right, and we're also going to talk something about the black peppers. What are the, uh, we'll also try to solve a few questions at the end. And we'll try to uh, explain all the details and what possible questions can come in the exams as well. Right, so do watch this video till the end. Right, but um, okay, so before going further, I would also like to address uh, something which has been going on in our Telegram groups recently. In our Telegram groups, there are a lot of thousands and thousands of, thousands of students in those groups, okay? So we've been getting a lot, uh, a lot of negative comments in those groups. I don't know, a lot of times uh, the other institutions or they, uh, uh, in order to market it, they try to uh, create these fake uh, IDs and try to downgrade the other institutes. So to address that issue, we also try to ask our own students in our paid groups um, and we actually got a positive response or a positive feedback from our students who have paid and in those particular groups. Those group has uh, about around two to three thousand students. So the you can actually make out that in um, the students who are actually enrolled in our uh, institute is actually really uh, we're having a positive feedback from them. But rather in those tele in that Telegram group where um, any students can join and uh, there are a lot and lots of negative. Uh, feedbacks and negative comments about it. So, um, to uh, a simple suggestion for you all, whoever is preparing for the exams, whatever exams, upcoming exams that you guys are preparing for, if you guys are watching this, uh, I would request you all to at least have try to have a first hand experience with us as well. Um, it can be in a way of a session, in a live sessions, or we usually conduct the daily uh, YouTube sessions, right? So in the comments as well, you can always comment, or for the premiered uh, videos as well, you can comment in those and, and our team is always present there. So you can, if you have any questions or doubts, you can always clear it out. And uh, so yeah, so I think that's uh, going to help you all to make a rational decision, a proper decision, because a lot of times uh, through social media, we uh, often get misled and we often uh, make a huge mistakes. And that's uh, from a student perspective, it's very important for you all to have a proper guidance and to have a proper line in which uh, you want to go and which would be the best suited for you, right? So uh, I think, um, yeah, so I think that's gonna help you all to have an experience with us first. And um, yes, so if you all like it, then you will continue to be a part of the our family and so that's all. Uh, I think uh, that's all that I want to talk. So now let's get back to the topic. And if you guys have a subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe or if you're new, right? And you can also press the bell icon down there and for further notifications for uh, the upcoming exams as well as you can get content for whatever exams you're preparing for. Right, so and if you guys like the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well and do share with your friends who have is giving the exam so they will get some guidance as well as we'll get some help through this right and now let's start with our first topic all right so the topic here i've chosen is on kumbukal pepper all right so this kumbukal pe pepper it has been developed it is a select uh, farmer selection okay by this uh, person, a farmer in Kerala, uh, his name is Katie Varghese, all right? So he is an innov innovative farmer uh, from the Ituki district. And then he created or he developed this resist uh, disease-resistant variety. So with this disease-resistant variety, it took him about like around 30 years to develop. It has been through a uh, selection process, all right? So let's go back to the history how we started. So it was in the year of 1980s and 1990s when all his plantation, pepper plantation, were um, actually, it was, um, sorry, it was completely devastated or completely prone to this disease known as slow wilt, all right? So wilting. So this is another disease and a very important disease in pepper. So he was facing that problem. 
And once he faced the problem, so he realized that there was this one uh, plant which was standing out in, uh, out of all the plants. So what he took from that plant, he started cloning it. And he started taking the propagation and he started vegetatively propagating through the one shoots, right? And so he developed this. Uh, it came to this variety known as this kumbhakal pepper, right? So uh, this person, he also won the President's Award for Agricultural Excellence and the National Innovation Foundation. Okay, so this kumbhakal pepper, it has been recognized. It, an, uh, it is also added to the National Register and it is also patented. Right, so this are some brief overview of this kumbhakal pe pepper. And now let's look into what are the characteristics of this pepper, okay? So first and foremost, uh, when you whenever you study the varieties of all the other crops uh, i would like to you all to request to go through the characteristics because those are very important okay a lot of times examiner can ask you all um, about uh, which of the following is a salt tolerant variety drought tolerant variety or whether it's a fusarium will variety uh, tolerant variety or resistance right so in that way for example you're taking a spice for spices right so you will make a table for all the varieties for black pepper for cardamom for all of the other things okay so all of the other spices in that way you can just write the variety you don't have to write in detail about the variety just remember one important standout point about that variety so in that way you'll be able to want to look into the table the ones you make you'll be able to remember and it'll be more imprinted in your mind okay so in that way you can study so this variety what's the specialty of this variety is that this is a disease resistant especially for the quick wills right and the food rot is, uh, resistant qualities and it is also known for its drought tolerant all right so it can be grown in uh, an area where uh, less water or no water is there so first thing here the variety this variety okay uh, it has a very highly developed root system so once you have this uh, highly developed root system then it able uh, it enables the root to adapt to that particular soil more uh, widely and uh, even in the stony areas as well as it needs a lesser soil depth okay Right, so uh, the another point here is that, uh, so, okay, so the another point here is that on that, uh, this typical pepper plant, they have is about 70 to 80 bells in a four rows, okay? So, but in each turn. So while this uh, kumbakal pepper, they get about 115 to 120 bells in six rows. So this, if you actually compare it, then you're getting more um, of uh, this, rose bell rose and this kumbakal pepper another thing is that they also have a uh, one kilogram okay one kg of this pepper this green pepper which is before the processing okay so this green pepper once you dry it then you can yield about 300 grams of dried pepper so dried pepper because a lot of uh from one kilo it reduces to 300 grams is because we go for sun drying right whenever you look at peppers it's always dried up right so we don't have use a fresh pepper so uh it still yields about 300 grams of the dried pepper and which also fetch about 10 percent price which is higher uh price higher which is due to its good high uh, high and good pungency as well as it has a very good oil content so these are some of the uh, characteristics which stand out uh, for this kumbukal pepper right and one thing that you guys need to remember here is that this variety is also registered under the protection of the plant varieties and farmers right act okay so these are some of the summary and brief overview that you guys need to know about this particular variety and now let us go move on and we're going to talk something about this uh, black pepper okay so now we're just going to uh, go in a bit of detail we'll discuss about its package of practices and some of the points on from the exam point of view okay all right so now let's start so the scientific name of black pepper is piper nigra all right so it belongs to the family of piperaceae and it is a perennially uh, perennial vine which and its uh, berries these are exclusively or extensively they are used for uh, spice and medicines as well so these are mostly found in the southern states such as in karnataka uh, it's also grown in the northeast india and andaman and Nicobar island 
and particularly this Kerala and Karnataka, they are one of the highest producer of this black pepper in India, right? So that is something, a uh, rough introduction about black pepper. Now let us look into the climate and soil. So uh, for climate and soil, the first thing, uh, it's usually grown in more of a tropical, subtropical, uh, humid rainfall or uh, humid temperature, okay? So they need a humid tropics, high rainfall and humidity. Geographically, if you can look into the map of India, then it's southern parts. They, ha they are more of a tropic, right? Subtropic. And they also have high rainfall and high humidity as well as in the northeastern regions. We have uh, proper subtropical as well as humid and high rainfall. So this black pepper, it suits very well, right? And it is mostly grown, uh, it can be grown successfully um, in about 20 degree north and uh, south latitudes and uh, usually about 1500 meter above the main sea level all right so uh, one of the favorable temperatures is about 23 to 32 degrees celsius but it can also go up to about 40 degrees celsius okay so it is highly uh, heat resistant as well and uh, the ideal temperature the proper temperature is around 28 degrees celsius so the rain favorable temperature range is about from 22 to 32 but the more ideal one is 28 degree celsius it means that at this degree it grows the best all right so it can produce uh, the best quality of this pepper so that's what it meant and we also have this that uh, the relative humidity all right so the range of the re relative humidity is about 75 to 80 percent which is quite high right and a uh, well distributed annual rainfall of about 1250 to 2000 millimeter is considered ideal for this black pepper and some of the for the soil the ph of the soil uh, ranges from about 5.5 to 6.5 right so it has a wide range of uh, pH level for the soil okay and uh, it can be uh, grown in a, it thrives really well in the red laterite soils all right so if you guys know which part of India has the highest amount of red uh, soils then do drop in the comment section right so okay now let's go on Okay, so propagation. So propagation is a very important topic in black pepper, okay? So uh, we'll look into it, why this uh, propagation method is very important. So the first thing that you guys need to understand here is that through propagation, although it can be done through seeds as well, uh, the seeds are also very viable, okay guys? But uh, these are not generally raised for plantation in a huge scale as the uniformity is not there, okay? So for that, we need a most uniform in a large scale plantation. So that's why we go for cuttings. We go for vegetatively propagation, all right? So here, these cuttings, these are mostly raised mainly from the runner shoots, okay? And these terminal shoots, they can be used, all right? So uh, let me just give you... Um, I haven't i have a picture given it uh coming up in the slide so let me just explain it a bit about those runner shoots as well as the uh, cuttings okay so in that way you'll be more clear about it so these cuttings the lateral branches remember the lateral branches they are taken okay so and the rooted lateral shoot branches or the shoots these are used for raising the bush pe pepper so we have two types of peppers we have a bush pepper which is a small tree like okay and another one which is the uh, normal uh, pepper which is the long pepper or which is a vine which is usually grown in a peg or with the help of a staking right and here uh, these the so that's about this cuttings and now let's look into for this production of this rooted cuttings. so how can this cuttings be done so various uh, methods are also there okay guys but in this we have like about four uh, important methods there are also other methods but i've taken only these four important methods which are more important okay so the first one here is the traditional method okay and the second one is rapid multiplication method the third is trench method the fourth is serpentine method and now let us understand with the help of a diagram all right so uh okay for this let me just tell you so that you'll be able to understand what nodes are okay so we'll be coming across the term nodes a couple of times now 
Okay, so let's go to this slide and I'm just going to show you what a notes are. So notes are these. Can you see the breakage of this? Uh, in a sense, whenever you see pluck a plant or anything, just try to find for the notes. Okay, whenever there's a demarcation of a line in between the uh, stems, right, the small branches, then those are notes. Okay, so these notes have the potential of growing new leaves, new buds, right? So these are the notes, all right? So I hope that is clear and now uh, let's just go back to this diagram, okay? Um, all right, so the first thing here yeah, as in a traditional method, right? So, okay, now let us understand which one are lateral branches, which one are vertical branches and which ones are runners, all right? So, um, so suppose this, uh, remember this pepper is a vine, okay? So they need some support to grow, right? So this is like a wooden peg which is giving a support to the pepper plant and these are basically the pepper shoot the main shoot uh, if you can see let me just give another color so these are the main shoot right and from this the primary shoots which is coming out these are runners right and we also have this vertical branches right so which grows straight the straight one these are vertical branches and the runners they come out like that right and the lateral branches these are on the top and they are mostly rounded they are short node and they are the fruiting branch okay they are mostly on the top right and the runners are mostly in the down and the vertical branches these are the ones that grow up and they are longer nodes they have a longer nodes than the lateral branches so these are something about the that diagrammatic view of the how a pepper plant would look like all right and now let's go to this traditional method so this uh, traditional method is basically one of the most uh important uh, one of the most uh, oldest methods of for this pepper plantation okay to that only we go for this uh, cutting method so in this the runner shoots we already know which runner shoots are right so these runner shoots these are uh taken from the very high yielding and very high uh healthy vines all right so we won't be selecting from the unhealthy vines because there's no use of selecting from the unhealthy vines because it's gonna die off so we will be selecting the best high yielding and the best healthy vines so once they are taken and they are kept coiled on the wooden peg you can see in that picture that the wooden peg is there so these runners are taken and these are coiled around this wooden peg right so once this uh, wooden pegs they are taken these wooden pegs are usually um, fixed on the ground as you can see in the picture and these will also prevent the shoot from coming in contact with this soil so once you coil it around so in that way they won't have any contact with the soil so because why don't we keep a contact with the soil because there are high chances of fungal infections or bacterial infections coming from the soil right so that's one of the main reasons as well and these runner shoots these are usually separated from the vine during the month of february to march and they also trim the upper leaves of this uh, shoot right and uh, so usually we take about two to three uh, nodes right from these cuttings of two to three nodes we already discussed what nodes are i think now by now you'll be clear so we'll be taking like uh, suppose this is a, a normal stem right and in a normal stem we'll usually find about one two and three so we'll find about like around uh, three uh, two to three nodes and we'll take this nodes okay so these are in a lateral bunch we'll take about this length of the nodes and we'll try to plant them either in a nursery bed or in a polythene bed all right uh, it has to have a very fertile soil and then this shades these are then just kept in the shade and proper irrigation is done and the once they are ready then they are planted so it is about something a very simple traditional method and now we go to this rapid uh, multiplication method. So this rapid multiplication method is one of the most efficient uh, propagation technique which was developed by Sri Lanka, okay, at Sri Lanka. And this uh, method is then uh, modified for adoption in India, okay. So in this method, basically what we do, we take a trench of about a pit or a trench of about 45 centimeter deep in the soil. Okay, so we dug up the soil and we also have a 30 centimeter width 
Okay, the breadth of the pit will be around 30 centimeter. The height of the or the depth of the pit will be around 45 centimeter. And this uh, trench, the dug up trench, is then filled with this rooting media, which is composed of this potting mix. So, what will make a potting mix? Uh, a forest soil, a sand, and a normal farmyard manure, manure. Okay, and all this should be in a proper uh, equal ratio. Okay, so once we take this uh, in the pits, then uh, we will take a bamboo house, bamboo uh, a bamboo stick, or you can also use a PVC pipe. Okay, and so what will we do? We'll be uh, putting this PVC pipe, and we'll be making in this picture, as you can see, uh, we'll be making it into a uh, 45 degree angle all right so we'll keep it into a 45 degree angle and these will be uh, the vines or the mother plants or the runners they'll be grown on the uh, base of these bamboos so as you can see in this picture right so here the potted plants are there the vines are there so these are the pipes which are at the 45 degree angle all right, and these from here, the vines will start growing and they will start creeping from the other side as well. They will start creeping. So this is a very important and a very efficient method. A lot of times they have been using this uh, method in and around India now, right? Okay, so I hope this is clear about this method. And now let's just go to another method, which is known as the, the trench method. So what happens here in this uh, trench method um, is that it's a simple like this um, it's the same like this modified rapid method it's just that here we don't use the bamboo okay so we'll just take uh, suppose uh, we'll just take a pit okay we'll dug up the pit in the main field all right but before that what we'll do here is that we'll just take a runner shoots of uh, cuttings okay and we'll take we'll take the cuttings and we'll put it in the potting mix uh, the same way the forest soil will be there sand will also be there and we'll also have a farmyard manure and B will be in the equal proportion okay so once we put make this potting mix uh, what we'll do is that we will plant this suckers with one node all right and they will plant it inside this small poly bags mini tiny poly bags and with one leaf should be ahead on top okay should not should not be one the leaves should be on top and it should not be touching the soil so uh, as you can see in this picture Right, so these are the propagated of these around the shoes in this polythene bags. So once they attain about a certain height, then they will be transferred to the uh, trenches in the main field. Okay, and another uh, thing is that they will also have some kind of uh, wooden peg or any support in that main field. So this is a simple method uh, known as the trench method. Another method here, as you can see, is a serpentine method. The serpentine method is more like a layering type of method. Okay, so the only difference here is that uh, this picture, I couldn't get that like, diagrammatical uh, diagram of uh, serpentine method for black pepper. So I took off this layering, but it's almost the same concept, okay, that you guys need to remember here. So uh, in this, below the picture is a picture of a serpentine method of a um, propagation of black pepper okay so here suppose they will be taking the mother sucker or the mother shoot right and so they'll be planting in the main uh, pot okay say about 500 gram of uh, potting mix will be there so once that once the runner shoot these are grown right so suppose the first node is in this area and then we have another node here okay and another node so forward right so here in this picture this is mainly in the soil only right but in this um, serpentine method what we do is that we take a mini poly bags okay as you can see here and this picture a mini poly bag they're taken and suppose we'll just put a mini poly bag here right and we'll just take a mini poly bag here and these suckers which is coming around they'll just be put on top of the poly bags and they will just press it slightly on the soil all right so in that way it will start developing a root and then it will start forming and once it is done and you just cut it up and then it will start a new we'll get a new uh, plant 
Okay, so these are some of the methods, very important methods. Try to remember the names and try to remember the uh, just the simple terms that are uh, just a simple definition or just a simple explanation. Just get your basics here with this, okay? It's very easy to understand and I think it will be very important for the exam as well. And now let's go to the plantation, just general overview of black pepper. So these are mostly grown in the season or the planting time is on December, sorry, to June to December, okay? So suppose uh, the spacing here is about 3 uh, meter into 3 meter, right? And the multi tire cropping system, you use about 7 to 8 meter in this, okay? So these are some of the things on this plantation and these are uh, this black peppers these are can be grown in slopes right and as well as in the uh, field as well so the lower halves of the northern uh, should be towards facing towards the northeastern slopes or the northern slopes okay so these are something that you guys need to remember and some of the cultural practice, practices that they follow here is this regulation of the shade so we usually do this regulation of the shade by this thing called looping the branches so we just loop the branches of standards and it is very necessary not only for providing this optimum light to the plants but also enable the proper standard growth of this vine to grow in a straight form okay so these are something about the cultural practices and we also do this called mulching where we just take uh, the green leaves from around and then we'll just cover it around the base of the main shoot on the uh, surface of the soil, okay? So this will decompose and this will create an organic matter, which is very important. And this will be applied at the end of the monsoon, okay? And so this, uh, I forgot to tell you about this looping thing again. So this looping uh, is mostly done in the month of June to September and usually twice, June and September, sorry. So it's usually done twice in a year, okay? So we usually do it for like two to three, four, um, in the first initial days as well, and we usually do it for the second, the second or the fourth year. Okay, so some of the irrigation practices is that we need a protective, proper protective irrigation, especially in the basin area during the uh, month of December to May, um, at around 10 days interval, right? And some of the after cultivation here, it says that we need about two readings, and which are usually given in the month of June to uh, July and at the end of October and November. Okay, and so one thing that you guys should remember here is that pruning is also very important in the cultural operation in black pepper. So we usually do this pruning for a standard, okay, uh, a standard size and a standard proper manner a proper portion of the uh, plant of the whole plant so we also pruned excessive foliage right and they also limit the height of the standards to about around six meter only so usually it has the once you the vine goes up it's very important that we maintain the height of the vine because it's going to be hard for harvesting as well right so we have to maintain the height of about six meter okay so that remember that and we also spray this NAA so these are hormones which are the rate so these are hormones which are a great for for getting a, a better berry size for increasing the berry size and these are sprayed of about 40 ppm right so these are something on the after proper just a simple thing about the cultivation right so i would also like to add something on harvesting as well okay so i forgot to write it down here so i'm just going to explain it to you so in harvesting uh the harvesting it usually uh starts from this third year okay from the third year remember and we should harvest the plant or the pepper the berries and uh in winters during November to March and um, these are usually done by hand picking and usually when we do the harvesting we usually take the maturity indices or the time when it has to be harvested is when the berries they turn a bit red in color okay so we usually have a green color and once it turns ripe once it ripes and then turns red so once we harvest these uh, berries then we put and separate them and they, we also dip them in this water so this water has to be about a in lukewarm water 
uh, it has to be in around 80 degrees Celsius and we just dip it for about one minute one minute and we go for sun drying and uh, we usually keep it for about seven to ten days okay so these are something about harvesting and now let us just try to solve some questions okay so the question number one is that which of the following uh, term is related to black pepper okay guys so uh, the options given here are topping number b is desuckering number c is priming number d is wetting number e is lodging so the uh, right answer for this is wetting okay so this wetting term is co it comes from this post harvest technology for black pepper okay so the main thing you guys need to remember in pepper for the post harvest we usually have uh, black pepper and white pepper okay so in black pepper uh, the post harvest operations which are followed these are of threshing we also blanch all right where we just dip them in hot water and we go for drying because it needs a more, less of moisture and then we go for cleaning and then where we separate the uh, proper and berries from the twigs and other debris right and then we go for grading proper grading and then we go for packaging so these are some of the post harvest methods in black pepper all right so whereas in this white pepper so these are usually generated by or created by retting okay so what is a retting a retting is when you dip the uh, when you actually ferment usually for the black for the white pepper we usually ferment from the green order blackberry from the black pepper okay so that's how we do this white pepper that's how you get the white pepper so here uh we just once we dip this uh the berries in the water we just frequently change the water so that is what uh wetting means right so here in this the fully ripe berries these are mostly taken for seven to eight days and these are the outer covering or the outer layer of the skin of the berries these are removed okay and once it's removed then they will go for washing right and then drying and then to keep the moisture level to only that to 12 percent so in that way in a white pepper the pepper will be white in color okay but the pepper that you get normally it's in black pepper and now let's go to another question which is which of the following disease is also known as the polu disease all right so the options given here are number one is foot rot number b is slow wilt number c is anthracnose number d is black heart and number e is root not nematode so guys the right answer for this is anthracnose anthracnose is also known as uh, polu disease in black pepper so okay guys so don't get confused with this uh, one pest okay known as polo beetles so what they do is that they eat the berries which creates a polo uh, berry so the, that's the name polo right but they have a separate kind of uh, symptoms completely different from how the polo beetle will attack okay so first thing here uh, this anthracnose it is caused by uh, it is a fungal disease which is caused by polytetrichum urosporites okay and the affected berries first thing they show a more of a sunken patches okay as you can see here so this disease they usually appear towards the end of the monsoon right and further this uh, as we go later in the stage further this discoloration as you can see here they also gradually increase okay so once this gradually increase and the berries they also show start showing this uh, characteristic splitting of this berries okay it'll be in a cross section so finally and then these berries they will return black and dry okay so this fungus uh, they also cause this angular to irregular uh, brownish lesions in the chlorat chloratic halo of the leaves okay so these are this white patches that you can see the sunken patches or the lesions you can see they all still start having chlorosis in the leaves and so these are some of the symptoms of the um of the disease so i think uh, some of the important diseases and pests i've given here are is that for pests we have polo beetle and we also have this leaf caterpillar okay and we also have leaf called thrips and shoot, top shoot borer and for diseases we have foot rot slow wilt and nose, and we also have nematode infestation so these are some of the diseases important diseases of black pepper and now let's go to another last uh, question which is on 
We have the following variety as of a black pepper, all right? So for guys, with this question, I would like you all to answer. So let me just read out the options for you all now. Number A is K Deva, number B is Pani Yur, number C is GTH1, number D is Anamika, number B is Monato. Right, so uh, if you guys know the right answer, drop it in the comments section. Okay, so um, before going, so I will also want you all to study about the varieties. I've already told you how to study the varieties, no? Right, so guys, for, uh, I also have another question for you all. So if you guys know the answer for this, drop it in the comment section, okay? So the question is, uh, black pepper is also known as which, um, as the king of spices or it is known as the queen of spices, right? So drop it in the comment section, all right? And guys, that's all for today. So before going, to, before ending the session, I would request you all to subscribe if you guys are new and you can also press the bell icon for further notifications. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you've liked the video. Thank you.